You're watching LMCC, your community TV. February is the most romantic month of all. And in Minnesota, it's also one of the coldest. Welcome to The Pulse, the show that tunes you into the heartbeat of the Lake Minnetonka community. My name's Beverly Foster, and tonight we're gonna to explore how to get the most out of this month, this cold month. When you look out the window, you're gonna see ice and snow. But you know, after, if you've been here for a while, you know that there's a big difference between a sunny day and a cloudy day and a windy day. If it's windy, that's, ooh, or if it's minus 20 or 20 above. Um, so some of these days that we have here are really quite beautiful and accessible. And so our first guest tonight is gonna help us think about some of the things we could do to get outside on these beautiful days. So we've got a friend who stopped by, a friend and a neighbor, and um, he's going to chat with us, and he's from right here in Minnetonka, where he once served as city manager. He was the state's finance commissioner in the Carlson administration, and he's got very, very, very many credits to his name. He has, uh, he's an author. Uh, he's been a professor at the U of M, among other things, and he's also received many awards, not um, the least of which was the WCCO Good Neighbor Award. So he's now serving as the board chair, chair for Three Rivers Parks. Please welcome John Ganyu. Thank you. John, um, I'm from the South, and whenever I tell my family back home that people ice fish, they're just amazed, and they want to know all about it. So you tell me, and I'll tell them. Tell me, where do people fish, and what do they fish for in the winter? Aren't the fish frozen down there? And how do you stay safe when it's so cold out on those lakes? Well, that, I guess the basic question is, why ice fish, or... Or why on earth would anyone in their right mind go ice fishing, <laughs> maybe? Um, well, a lot of reasons, I think. Probably one is uh, you don't need a boat, for one thing. I mean, you can just walk right out on the ice. Well, if, if it's at least four inches thick, you can walk out on the ice. And uh, if it's a foot thick, you can drive on it, but, uh, which is always kind of a, a unique aspect of fishing that people like in the south. I, I think it probably has more to do with just getting outside and uh, spending some time with your buddies. In fact, that's what, that's what my uh, son-in-law tells me, who's an avid ice fisherman. I haven't gone with him yet this year, but I keep promising that it will. It's been a little nippy, I think, this year so far. I so I would say <laughs> yeah. so. So let's go back to the, are the fish not frozen down there? They're not. They, they swim below the ice, obviously, because oh, you can still catch them. And, you know, I, I was thinking one other thing. There's probably no sport that is uniquely Minnesotan as ice fishing. I mean, think grumpy old men, if you remember that movie. That was, it's, a, it's more of a social thing. Uh, and that's kind of the great thing about it, is you can, uh, you can spend any amount of money you want. I mean, there are some really elaborate ice, uh, ice houses that you can you know, sit in with you know, your TV, satellite, all those sorts of things. Uh, they have uh, temporary structures that you can put up on the ice. Uh, you can even, in fact, my son-in-law is a, a bucket and a warm jacket is pretty much all that, uh, all that he needs to do that. Um, so it's really open to a lot of different people. I, I did check before I, I came in, and uh, Whale Tail Lake in uh, Minnetrista is, uh, apparently they're doing really well this year, and uh, they're reportedly catching 12-inch uh, crappies, although wow. I haven't been out there to do it. But you can... Uh, you can uh, fish for different things. Wow, that's great. Thank oh, you. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I, I speak from not, no experience in right. sharing this with you, but other than uh, it's very popular. So uh, four inches is safe to walk on, and a foot is safe to drive on. And I'm sure the ice fishermen know that very well, but um, uh, just to reinforce that. So what are going Can ahead. I just ask, Please. as far as safety we're talking about, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's important to caution people that uh, ice is not uniformly thick. Oh. And so like uh, where there's moving water underneath or near piers or bridges or things, it's not as safe in those areas. Um, uh, interestingly, that uh, when there's a lot of fish, they stir up the water and so it, it doesn't freeze as thick 
in that area too. Uh, one thing though is that you've heard the booming and the yes, cracking yes. is uh -huh. is not necessarily uh, bad. Okay. In other words, it's really just the ice expanding and contracting with the temperature. So okay. that's not necessarily the warning that it's not thick enough. But watch the watch the signs and be sure to you know check our website and make sure okay. that. Uh, oh, as far as where to fish, um, you ask. Uh, really, anywhere where there's a designated access point, oh, okay. you can uh, you can go out on the ice and, and wherever wherever you want. Now, uh, the DNR pretty much governs a lot of those things. So uh, that the ice, uh, your ice houses, if they're permanent, have to be off the ice at a certain time. It's basically mid March, kind of in that that area, uh, so that it's so that they don't melt and fall into the lakes. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're going to look for that website. And you want to go ahead and tell us what it is so we can... Oh, yeah, it's uh, threeriversparks.org. Okay. So threeriversparks.org, you can find everything on that. In fact, we offer uh, a number of classes for those people that are... In fact, you get your brother up here, you can uh, you can share that with him. But okay. In fact, let me... I just wrote down a couple notes about when we're offering this. We're offering a, a beginner ice fishing. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's actually this Saturday on the 8th, okay. uh, February 8th. Uh, two locations, Fish Lake Park, mm -hmm. in, uh, that's in Maple Grove, okay. and uh, Cedar Lake Farm Park in New Prague. Great. Uh, and then also a week later at French Park in Plymouth. And uh, we supply the, uh, all the gear. That you, that you might need the equipment, but you do need reservations. So uh, check the website and, uh, and be sure to sign up for that. Excellent. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, you for bet. that. Because I've always been curious about that. Uh, John, what else is going on in the parks uh, this winter that um, people could take advantage of? Well, a lot. Um, it has been pretty nippy, but we embrace winter at Three Rivers. So we have a, we're a 24, uh, we're a 12 month seasons in, uh, in Three Rivers. So we offer a lot of different things. I think probably one of the most popular is uh, cross country skiing. Oh, yeah. In fact, we just opened, uh, just uh, last month, opened a brand new trail um, at Highland, uh, Highland Lake Reserve, mm -hmm. which is on kind of the backside of the Highland ski area. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a new 5K trail. Wow. And it's uh, not only lighted, but it's, uh, we make snow on that trail. It's one of only 10 in the country hmm. that have those facilities. So you have pretty much guaranteed snow then uh, no matter when you go out. And I, 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 I'm a cross-country skier myself, and I, not just by my recommendation, but a lot of folks are calling it the best Nordic trail in the, in the metro area. Wow. Wow. Uh, we, we offer something similar. We offer a 2.5K trail uh, at uh, Elm Creek in Maple Grove, and, and I should emphasize that we have, uh, we, we have trails and loops of all, all difficulties. So there, if you're a beginner, if you're advanced, uh, you'll, you'll find it as challenging as you want. You can also get rent equipment at those locations too. In fact, uh, at uh, not just those locations where we make snow, but we have about 70 miles of uh, natural snow yes, areas, so wow. trails that nice. uh, you ski on uh, without where we don't make the snow for cross country, in in many of our parks, and you can you can check the conditions on our website uh, before Great. you before you go out. Uh, again, at uh, nature centers, you can rent the equipment and and have a great day of that. We we also offer downhill and uh, snowboarding. In fact, we were uh, the first snowboarding area in the metro area here. Many well, several decades ago when we started offering that at, at Highland. Uh, you can also do that at, at Elm Creek, wow. I mentioned, the, the two areas. In fact, when we, when we close the season at Highland this year, uh, we'll, be, we'll be tearing down the chalet mm -hmm. uh, and, and then constru starting construction on our long overdue and awaited uh, new chalet. If you've ever oh, been out to Highland, yep. um, yep. I've tripped over more boot bags there than I care to remember, <laughs> I think, but it's, uh, it's, uh, we'll be replacing the chalet, doubling the size, so in a much more uh, easy to, easy, much easier to get around inside. Uh, we're, we're heavily into uh, education and training. We, we're not a, a destination ski area per se, right. so we do, a lot of, we do a lot of lessons. In fact, um, if you, people are amazed when I tell them how many lessons we give at, at Highland every year. 37,000 really? uh, ski lessons wow. to uh, kids of all ages. Wow. I mean, it's beginner to wow. advanced, and so uh, just very, very popular. A um, couple of the other things I was going to mention. Oh, we uh, more uh, closer to home is uh, we also, in partnership with the city of Minnetonka, offer skiing, uh, cross-country skiing on the Lake Minnetonka, on the uh, uh, Glen Lake Golf Course. 
So oh, we do that in conjunction. Oh, you can get sure. your equipment. Sure, you can sure. get your equipment there, sure. there too. Um, some of the other things, I just made a couple notes of what I thought people might be interested in. And check the website because it has a, a lot of activities. Okay. But uh, it's uh, basically we're trying to make uh, fun and affordable and um, and safe uh, programs available to folks to so they can get outside and enjoy the winter. Uh, we have a, a very popular tubing hill at Elm oh, Creek yes. in uh, in Maple Grove. In fact, they have the you know you can take the tubes to the top of the hill, and so you don't have to carry them up like we used to as kids. Uh, you can rent snowshoes. Uh, in fact, the snowshoes we have are not like your like we used to use when back in the dark ages when we made them out of birch bark or so whatever we did at right. this time and and we in fact one of my kids actually wove a, a pair of snowshoes that she she still uses but they're very easy to use lightweight you can rent them at our at, at most of our of our uh, nature centers excellent to go out excellent um, we were offering beginner snowshoeing mm -hmm. uh, February sixteenth that's Sunday at Galewood Farms okay. which oh, is uh, in Minatrista. Uh, two other things I was going to mention sure. that folks might be interested. We, we do a lot of uh, programming with uh, uh, of adapted programs for for those uh, for those uh, people that want to get into the parks that might have a disability. Right. So we work with other other groups to provide those. In fact, we're offering a adaptive skiing open house at Highland, and that's on uh, Saturday, February fifteenth. If folks are interested in Thank that. You. Yeah. And then one I was going to mention, just because I promised one of my, one of my kids I'd do that, uh -huh. is because uh, she's a huge uh, winter bike, bicyclist, is uh, this is something completely different. It's called our, our Frozen Frolic Bike Race. And we have a, we have a series of those. Uh, in fact, the first one's beginning uh, this Saturday, February 8th, and there'll be a couple other weekends we'll do that. And it's the, our uh, single track trails that we have. Uh, we have two of them that are premier uh, track trails that people wow. use in the summer. To go out, but you can also use them in the winter wow. for these these races through the woods. Uh, Murphy Hanrahan, that's in Prior Lake and uh, Elm Creek Park, also is the uh, the other location for that. Wow. Sorry, I tend to ramble on here, but there's a Gosh. lot of uh, a lot of programs that we have. You can get out, and this is just just scratches the surface. Well, as you can tell, John is very excited about the parks, as he should be. They're wonderful opportunities for all of us. And I know I'm going to be out trying some of that cross-country skiing and the uh, <laughs> snowshoeing. And I just want to say one more thing before we wrap. Um, I know it seems early, but it is time for parents to think about summer camp opportunities. So, John, if you can just quickly tell us how we can um, take advantage of those. You bet. Uh, we offer camps uh, ages 4 to 15, right? and it's everything from, oh, nature, about, uh, exploration, outdoor recreation, golf, uh, fishing, farming, art, and history, okay. actually. And so you can sign up, um, you know, make some friends, make some new memories. Uh, they're popular, so registration's already open, so people should register as quickly as they can. And uh, they're at our nature centers and our golf centers, uh, also at the landing in Shakopee for the history, and then also uh, Galewood Farms in Minatrista. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming by, John, and um, we will definitely have you back. Well, thanks. Okay. Good night. Great to have you. Yes. The Pulse will be back after this short break. Here's what's coming up on First Responder TV. We'll talk with St. Bonifacius Fire Chief Shane Weber about how to ensure your home is safe on Safety Source. The Excelsior Fire District trains every winter to respond to ice-related emergencies. We'll introduce you to Rick Eltendorf, a Loretto firefighter who goes above and beyond, and we'll give you an update on scams that have been targeting citizens in the lake area on Scam Alert. First Responder TV airs daily on LMCC's Channel 12. Welcome back, and now we're going to turn our attention to some indoor things to do. Our next guest is a freelance writer and columnist, and she's very easy to find. She has a blog, she has a Twitter account, um, she has a column in Lakeshore News, and also she has a radio show now, and that's uh, Saturday from 2 to 4 on My Talk Radio FM 107.1, and it's called Pop Life. Um, please welcome the incomparable Natalie Hagamo. Oh, and before I begin, Natalie, mm -hmm. I just want to say I know you're from Hawaii. Yes. And I know you're probably feeling a little homesick with all this snow and this minus zero weather. And so I brought you a special gift. Oh, you did? I brought you a taste of home. Oh, I like presents. Can it's I open a, it now? Yes, you may. Taste of, ah, ha, 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 love it. This is my absolute favorite. 
I got Love that. the spam. Good, good, good. You obviously read my blog and have listened to my radio show. I've studied. I've studied. <laughs> I wouldn't say I've stalked you, but I've studied. Thank you. So, Natalie, <laughs> uh, tell us what's going on around here um, for romantic things to do. Well, there are so many things that you can do around town, and, and the Excelsior area is my favorite area. I've lived here for almost 20 years now. Um, one of my favorite things to do is to do the weekly wine tasting at Excelsior Vintage. And right now they have, in fact, I brought a little bit with me. This is a Prosecco, and they have these edible hibiscus flowers, oh. which you put inside, oh. and you pour the champagne or the Prosecco over it, and the flower opens up, oh. and they're edible, and it just has a really nice, lovely That's taste. Beautiful. So romantic. Yes. Yes. And so I brought some of that, and uh, I'll have some leftovers later. You can join me or not. I don't, I'm not going to waste. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, that's beautiful. Yeah, it, it really is. You know, that's really fun. What they do is they, they sample different wines from all over the world, and they do it on Fridays, and they also do it on Saturdays from, I believe it's 3 o'clock on. But you can go in there anytime with friends, yourself, or your significant other, mm -hmm. and pick out, you know, some kind of wine or... Um, maybe a Prosecco or a Champagne, but have fun with the experience. Mm. Greg and Susan, who both are there, are so knowledgeable. In fact, I keep trying to throw Greg because I keep telling him, well, I'm having lamb. What kind of wine should I have? And that's easy. So I've been throwing things at him like, I want to have a bubble bath in the afternoon <laughs> while eating Fritos. You know? <laughs> and he gives me ideas of you know, what to pair with all these different events. So it's been kind of a thing I'm still trying to throw him. But that's a lot of fun to do. And just to go in any time and really enjoy the experience of picking that wine or you know whatever, whatever beverage you're going to get. That's nice. Yeah, that's really sweet. And tell us again where the store is located. That's at Excelsior Vintage, which is on Highway 7 okay. in Excelsior. Okay, got it. Yep, right off 7, you'll see it. Okay. Yeah. So what else? Well, um, another thing, there is a new store that's opened in Excelsior called Scoozy. I've heard of Scoozy, yeah. Yes, it's a home decor store. Okay. And I believe it's at 221 Water Street, mm -hmm. downstairs. Mm -hmm. It's in the space that Mary O'Neill used to be in mm -hmm. for many years. Which we miss very much. Yes. Yes. But we're glad Scoozy's here. Yep. Scoozy's there. Deborah Anton owns it and runs it. She's there herself all the time. When she did the renovations, they took down these, it was some kind of covering over the wall, and unearthed the most beautiful walls down there. Oh. And she turned one of them into a wishing wall. Oh. So you can go in and write down a little wish and roll it up and put it in the wishing wall. Oh, nice. So she has people coming from all over who are kind of doing that. So in addition to checking out her store and seeing what's going on, you can go put a wish in the wishing wall. Oh, that's sweet. Which is a great thing to do, mm -hmm. you know, in February. Mm -hmm. And also she's doing a series of events starting with one on February 8th called Remembering Romance. Mm -hmm. And she's taking, by day it's this home decor store. But on the weekends and some evenings, she's having live music and she's turning it into what she's calling the cellar. Mm. So it's kind of a scoozy after dark thing. Mm -hmm. So you can hear live music. The event on the 8th is going to have, I think there's going to be three different musicians. There's going to be catering by Joey Novas. Wow. And most of our events are catered by Joey Novas. So there's always good food. There's some wine. So if you can, you can find her on Facebook. If you go to Facebook and you search Scoozy, mm -hmm. follow her page, and then you can stay up to date on all the different events that are going on. Okay. Because she'll be doing, I think we're going to see some really fun things coming out of that store we already have. It's quickly becoming kind of the heart of Excelsior. Oh, good. With what she's doing during the day and then what she's turning Scoozy into at night. So during the day, it's a design shop? Yep, it's a home decor store. Wow, fun. Yeah, but that's definitely a fun thing and to go into. And at night, it's a party. It's a party. Excellent. Yep. So you got to follow her on Facebook to find out when her events are. Okay. Very, Excellent. very fun. Scoozy. All right. Scoozy. So yes. now, what else have we got? There is something I've gotten into recently that I'm very excited about. There is a place called All Bodies Pilates. And right now, they're in Navarre, but they're moving to Excelsior come March 1st. Okay. But she's open right now, and I've been visiting with her. And you wouldn't necessarily think, well, what is, what's romantic about doing Pilates? A lot. Yeah? There's, it's kind of twofold. You can do it with your partner. Mm -hmm. She does private lessons. She also does group lessons. And, but the, the thing that I've come to learn about Pilates, and I'm probably very late to the Pilates party, 
is what it does to help you use your muscles properly mm. and how much it strengthens your pelvic floor. Excellent. And if you are a woman of a certain age or you've had children like myself, mm -hmm. and I'll just be blunt, jumping jacks are not in my plan. Any kind of jumping <laughs> after three kids, not really what I plan on doing. Pilates changes that mm. because you, you strengthen your pelvic floor. Oh, that's wonderful. Yep. So pretty okay. soon I'm going to be able to do jumping jacks. Excellent. So do they have couples classes or? Regular classes, but one-on-one -on -one that she can do with couples. And it's just oh, a really nice. fun thing to do to be able to, it's a workout that's not super intense and hard, but you really feel it the next day. Excellent. And I've really come to learn what, you know, when, when I've worked with trainers and they say, you know, engage your core. And mm -hmm. I'm like, well, what is that? Mm -hmm. And she's really, Andrea is the woman who owns and runs it and does the lessons, has shown me what that is. Wow. And it's all bodies Pilates. Okay. Again, right now in Navarre. And she's going to be opening up an Excelsior. Okay. But just a neat, different thing that you can do, you know, with your significant other. And she even does some introductory um, lessons and packages. So I think it'd even be a fun kind of, you know, first couple of dates thing to do. Hey, sure. let's go do a private Pilates lesson. Oh, very nice. Different, but a little outside the box, which very was kind different. of my thinking for what I wanted to share. I like that. I like yeah. that a lot. Okay. So have you got anything else? There is a really great event coming up on February 20th. Mm -hmm. It's the Sizzle for a Cause, and it's an Iron Chef style competition where um, there's five local restaurants that are competing. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. And they'll be, I'm, in fact, I'm one of the judges, oh. which means I get to eat so I'm very excited about that. And uh, it's the second annual. Last year, Joey Nova's won. Okay. And they, they, won, they win this golden cleaver uh -huh. oh, that cute. then will be passed around. Uh -huh. So that's February 20th. And I think we'll have a link up on where people can go to get tickets. Okay. It's benefiting the ICA food shelf. Sure. And um, it's going to be at Bayview. And again, it's on February 20th. And that's a neat thing, I think, too, for if you're looking for a Valentine's Day gift, get a couple of tickets for that. Yeah. Because it's for a good cause. It's benefiting the ICA food shelf. And it's going to be a fun night. That's perfect. You can have some wine, have a cocktail, enjoy appetizers by the participating restaurants, meet um, Ross Feeback, who's a lifestyle expert on Fox 9 News. He's okay. going to be a judge. He'll be there. Meteorologist Paul Douglas is going to be there judging. Uh, Tara Mulkey, Mrs. Minnesota, she's going to be there. Uh, I will be there. Oh, it's just going to be a lot of fun. Yep. I can hear that. Yep. So, Natalie, I just want to ask you one more question here. Um, it's uh, Valentine's evening, and what are you going to do? What's going to be a special date for you and your husband? Well, I am divorced. Oh. <laughs> That's a conversation stopper, right? Yes, <laughs> okay. So we won't be doing anything together. Never mind on that one. But, uh, you... <laughs> Take it from here, Natalie. And really, on val to be honest, Valentine's Day, in the evening, I'm not a huge fan of going out that evening. I'm, I'm a big fan of celebrating it. Okay. I prefer to do a lunch, you know, something like that, or maybe go out to dinner on a different night because it is going to be so crowded. Sure. But if I had to pick, say, an ideal date of yes, what I was going to do. for anyone. For anyone, whether it be... You know, with your husband, your ex-husband, if you're on good terms, sure. you know, your significant other. I would love to do, one of my favorite things to do is to go to Excelsior Nails and Spa, which is right by Dunn Brothers, okay. off of Water Street, and do what's called their signature deluxe pedicure. Okay. And you can do that together. You nice. can do it with a friend. You can do it on a date. Do it with your guy. Sweet. And it's just very, very, very romantic. Do that and then go for some lunch or dinner right in town. Excellent. Well, it has been great visiting with you today, Natalie, and I look forward to talking to you again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's it for now. We hope you enjoyed the show and that you'll join us next month for some tax tips. Um, and also, we want to hear from you. What are some of the good coffee shops in the neighborhood? When you're up late ca crunching numbers, um, where are you going to get your caffeine fix? So let us know where you like to go, and maybe we'll share them next month on The Pulse. Thanks again for joining us, and no matter where you go or what you do, we hope you have a fabulous February.